this video, we go hands-on with 50 different iOS 12 changes and features. If you appreciate this video, please leave us a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Let's check it out. On the iPad, you'll find a new pull-down indicator like the iPhone 10. You also get AM and PM in the status bar for the clock. And iPhone-only apps like Instagram now use the iPhone 6 layout. The new spacebar trackpad feature, which was a way to use the trackpad without a 3D touch device, now works on the iPhone 10 as well, even though it has 3D touch. Now the share sheet has a whole lot of tweaked glyphs like this one right here, a new print glyph. There's also a new create PDF glyph in the share sheet, slightly updated. There's also a new tweaked copy glyph which is right here. And a couple more, the Safari reading list glyph has been slightly tweaked, very, very slight tweaks there with the eyeglasses. And then lastly, there is a bigger ellipsis icon for the more button. There's a faster face ID unlock animation on beta two. So this is beta one that I'm unlocking right now. Notice the little lock icon at the top. See how it opens up. Now notice how much faster it is with beta two, just like that, see that? See how quick that lock unlocks? Just like that. There's new scanning with Face ID text when using Face ID. I don't know if you caught that that time. Let's do it one more time so you can see it. See, it says scanning with Face ID. The location indicator in the status bar has now been rounded off slightly. Very, very subtle change, but noticeable nonetheless. And there's a more pronounced X in the notification center. See a little X there on beta one and the X is more visible on beta two. There's also a larger X when viewing a notification preview using 3D touch. So you see the X there on beta two. It's gonna be much larger than the X on beta one. And the notification center text is replaced by the name of the app associated with group notifications when you tap it, just like that. Now, if you try to do the same thing on beta one, you'll see the notification center text still displayed. There's also an updated 3D touch animation, it's subtle. You see it there on beta one, and here it is on beta two, slightly updated. You'll notice new arrows in Siri shortcuts in Spotlight Search. The AirPlay icon in the Control Center Music widget is tinted blue to indicate that it's connected to a source. The Start button on the Timer Control Center shortcut is no longer a circle, but now it has a peel shape. In the News app, you'll find Spotlight listed under the Browse section. In the App Store, Search Suggestions now correspond to your global text settings set up in the Settings app. There's a new personalization section in the App Store. When you tap on your user, you see this little personalization section, which allows you to identify data that Apple may use to improve the App Store. There's some slightly updated Memoji options and tint. Not a whole bunch of changes here, but you will notice a new color option for the browse, which you don't get on the original beta. There's also a slightly modified color selection for earrings, which you'll notice here. And headwear on beta two, which is on the left, by the way, gets additional color options. So just tap that little button to pick from additional colors. There are larger album names and media types in the Photos app. These were previously pretty small, now much more legible. And there's a new iCloud keychain password pop-up. It doesn't expose the full keyboard, allowing you to see more on screen while still being able to interface with your passwords. In the home app, there's an updated doors and locks glyph under notifications. And screen time gets a new devices option, which allows you to choose between any iCloud connected device that is running the latest beta. You can choose one of your other devices or select all devices if you wish to do so. In the previous beta, there was a clear usage data option at the bottom of the screen time interface, but now that has been removed in beta two. 
And now the toggle to switch between categories and apps slash websites has been updated with new text. As you can see there, apps and websites and show categories. But what's really cool is that you can get individual app details now on beta 2. So if you tap on an app, you get individual details about your usage. You get details about the category, the app rating, the developer. And you can add limits to apps directly from these individual screens. But what's cool is that you can now edit apps and add additional apps to your limits and do them all in one fell swoop. So I can select an additional app and then just choose add. And once I'm ready, that will add both apps to the limit. The battery usage graphs that you find in the battery section of the settings app have been updated, as you can see there. And battery usage time, which it was previously called on beta one, is now called activity in beta two. Now this is a very subtle thing, but there is slightly less spacing for the various panels in the settings app. The FaceTime icon was also updated in the settings app to match its new look on the home screen. There's that FaceTime icon. There's a new Siri suggestions toggle under notifications for each app. And you'll find modified toggle names under Siri and search. And there are slightly rearranged face ID settings. So beta one is on the right side, beta two is on the left. And you can see some slightly rearranged settings there. Under iTunes and App Store settings, you now see a data manage link. And tapping this link will open up the privacy description for the App Store, give you the full rundown on that. And the voice memo settings have been simplified just to be easier to understand. So you have clear deleted, you have audio quality, so it basically just says compressed and lossless instead of that more detailed description that you found in the previous beta. And there's a new voice memo splash screen. When you open up the voice memos app for the first time, you see it's redesigned, you get iCloud and more devices now support voice memos. There's a new notification center during bedtime section. When you have bedtime enabled with do not disturb as well, you'll notice you get a during bedtime section under notification center for notifications that came in during that time. There's also a slightly updated description for managed notifications. And there's a slightly new 3D touch animation for the music app. I don't know if you can see that. And here it is on beta two, slightly updated, looks nice. Now here's something I really like. You can now 3D touch on the now playing bar in the music app to get options and details on the currently playing song. Just 3D touch like that. And there's a slightly updated do not disturb description on beta two. Uh, you can see on beta one, it talks about the moon icon. Well, that is not mentioned on beta two, at least for the iPhone 10, because the moon icon isn't displayed without opening control center. The shapes in the messages app camera now feature a slightly modified top row. Now it's right up left instead of right, right, right. Almost looks like a cheat code for an old school Nintendo game. And the stock podcast app now gets a now playing indicator on the currently playing chapter, which is right there. So let's press play. And now you can see the indicator corresponding to the chapter that you're currently listening to. And in the notes app, there's an updated add people glyph. It's a slight change, but nonetheless noticeable. And this last feature was actually on beta one, but I missed it. Where's my iPhone? But I wanted to show you because it's really cool. Which so you can ask Siri to find your iPhone. Should I try to play a sound on it anyway? Yes. Okay, just a moment. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a hands-on look at 50 features found in iOS 12 beta 2. Which one is your favorite? Please let me know down below in the comment section and also thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.